Today I have the great three-point shooter of the IUG <laughs> basketball, Courtney Alexander. She's part of this what one of the Splash Sisters. <laughs> going into her senior campaign, even though COVID and stuff is slowing things down a little bit. But um, today I'm catching up with Courtney. I haven't seen her in months. Courtney is somebody who's been like a, a, a light in a dark room for me. I mean, you know, when I got the IUP, she, she was all smiles and love for me. <laughs> like that since day one and it's never changed. So, you know, I got a lot of love for Courtney. She's somebody very special to me. Um, Courtney, how, how's everything been for you this summer? Well, uh, COVID definitely took a toll on me. Um, doing online classes is not fun. Um, I'm a biology pre-med major, so I had to do my anatomy lab online, which is really hard to do, my chemistry lab online, but I got through it. My GPA did not suffer, thank goodness. Um, other than that, though, I've been able to work out a lot, so that's good. Um, nothing was really holding me back from doing that. Um, and I'm just ready to come back to IUP. Really ready. Don't be, don't be too, don't be too excited to come back. I've been here. I haven't left. <laughs> well, I'm you're gonna to, like it when all of us get back. I'm ready to leave IUP. <laughs> <laughs> but that's. I, I was. I almost got a headache from you just saying them classes. I'm, I'm glad you had. You handled all of that well, and your GPA didn't suffer. And yeah. it, it, that's pretty much been the main thing. It's been a lot of free time. So being able to work out. And, you know, just had that free time to do, like, meditating or whatever. That's pretty much what I've been doing. Yeah. Just, like, trying to find other things to do in that free time. But uh, that's good, though. I'm glad you're going. That's going, out, going well for you. Yeah. I feel like with all of us having this free time, you kind of realize, like, what's important. And for those of us that got to spend time with family, that was yeah. really nice. Like, being away at college for four years, I, like, would see my family, like, you know, for three months out of the year, but now I've seen them for like six months. It's been, it's been interesting, but it's really <laughs> nice. You, wait, now are you getting tired or is it, are you getting I'm, tired? Of I'm definitely ready to come back. I've, <laughs> I've loved spending time with them. Like my brother and I definitely got closer, but it, uh, it it's tough being in your house all the time, yeah. but um, I'm ready to come back. <laughs> yeah. Like when you think, think about it from like outside of the box, it's, it is like crazy. Like, there's a new normal now like nothing is like the same and it's just like like when I when I think about the times like during the school year like now to me now it's like man we really were able to do all that like I know it like it was a privilege or something you know what I mean right it was a privilege to go to a restaurant and not have to bring a mask with you yeah yeah like, now it's, nobody's outside there's no events no mm -hmm. it's, you know, summertime there's like concerts and stuff like that or, yeah and stuff and there's like none of that at all so I mean it, it's crazy but I mean it's, it's for the good so um how 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 are things going into senior year this year like what I know we talked a little bit about it but you know for the sake of the interview uh tell us about how they're gonna do your process with you um doing classes and you know what coach might have planned for y'all and in the okay. season you know tell us about when the season starts and everything yeah, so actually this morning we got the email from President Driscoll that we wouldn't be able to come back to campus, except for some people, like the, the new freshmen coming in and people that need to be in person to finish their degree. Um, but we haven't heard anything about the athletes, so I'm not sure um, who's going to be allowed on campus if only freshman athletes will be allowed. Um, so m the rest of us probably will just be in apartments off campus. Um, but as of right now, we don't know what day we can start practicing. Um, but I think that the gyms will be open and we'll be allowed to get in the gym with our coach as long as there's like social distancing being put in place. I don't think that the whole team will be able to practice together for a long time. So that's, it's going to be weird because, um, we are going to start the season in January and we're going to have 16 games apparently. And um, Sam Travers said that that could change. We could get more games potentially. But right now, there's 16 games. Uh, quick shout out to Sam Travers. Love you, Sam. Hope you see this. All right. We keep love going. you, Sam. Yeah, um, we love yes, you. thank you for keeping us informed. Um, so we could get more games. But as of right now, it's 16 games starting in January. It'll be January and February. And hopefully, we'll get an NCAA tournament. Um, 
but we don't know what day we'll be able to practice together before January. Um, so yeah, that's, I think that we're having the town hall meeting for athletes tonight and tomorrow. So I'm definitely going on there and asking all these questions. So I might know more information tonight. I, oh yeah. I know you, I know you loaded. You ready to go. You ready. <laughs> I got all my questions written out. This, yeah. This, uh, I mean, it, to me, I think it, it's getting more political than anything else. Like, you know, like, like, like you say, uh, this, you said like about practice, we won't be able to practice together for a long amount of time or anything. Like I'm coaching girls at AU right now. Oh, and like yeah. the tournament we just had, literally, like the girls can play on the court. They can breathe, cough, spit, <laughs> blood, sweat, all that on the court. And then when they come off, like the refs were stopping the game and everything to make sure every girl on the bench had their mask on, including the coaches. So as and soon like, as they subbed out, they had to put a mask on? Yeah. And mind you, you're you're huffing and puffing when you come out. I, I'm not thinking. I'm thinking about breathing, getting, catching my breath. And I got <laughs> now, the mask on. I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, we don't need to wear masks. So no, I'm not. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> proper precaut. I get proper precautions and everything, but at the same time, I just subbed out of a game where I'm breathing and yelling and spitting and stuff. So it's like that's what I mean. How it gets political because. Yeah. Like if you're gonna, if you have COVID, it's gonna be transmitted on the court. When you're off the court, there's no difference. Yeah, yeah exactly. it's strange. It now it becomes like a headache because you look at it this way, but then there's that. Now when you look at that, then it's just over here, and then there's like it's too many. Looking at it from too many aspects. I mean, yeah. for me, all in all, like you know, I I don't know. I don't I I don't fully know. I'm not a doctor. I don't know anything. But like being like, I don't see too many people dying from it like it's the bubonic plague i there's proper precautions and i'm not saying just go back to normal i'm not saying that at all oh, that's a bad idea but i don't i don't I, I get we have to micromanage like like i said it's just too mm -hmm. and for me like i'm not a politician or anything and i don't know <laughs> but like yeah it, it, that's for me <laughs> it's definitely confusing very confusing the rules that they're putting in place but I'm sure that they know more than us, so hopefully it works. Yeah. yeah. And and another thing is, like, you know, we all got to take a look at our time right now. Like, you know, this is history right here. You know, down the road, 20, 40 years, 100 years from now, you know, they're going to be talking about history class or whatever. So, like, how we act today and stuff is going to reflect on us, like, as a country and our later generations and whatnot. So, like, you know... We got to we got to think about it for for a future standpoint for our kids and stuff like just just for thing that's going on you know what I mean so like we got to be able to like be conscious of everything that's going on and like let's do let's make something great out of this for the future generation and it takes a lot out of that something that if we can do that it's great you know what I mean <laughs> so this is thinking for sure so what are your what are your plans this season coming up? I know, like, you know, me and both, we both we were supposed to have the regionals going on. We were both supposed uh -huh. to. Oh, my goodness. Like, <sighs> what a devastating when time. When I tell you, I, I had every, I had no doubt in my mind that we were both going to, like, do something historical, like, both go all the way and win all of that. Yeah. And, and keep, like, oh, my goodness. The case, Casey, yeah. like, full house pack court. I like. know it was oh it was God. definitely crazy because all of the teams that we were playing had already came like had they had already come to IUP so like yeah. they already traveled we we're like why can't we just play but it all got canceled so and, and I definitely it, what oh, I said and it was just the weekend I'd rather at least like you know what I mean all we had was Saturday Sunday yeah and oh my it like, yeah it was like Friday Saturday Monday or something like that so yeah. Very sad. Um, I definitely cried, but <laughs> um, I feel like now that like I have a fifth year, thank goodness. Um, and even though I was going into this next year thinking it'd be a full season, like I really thought that this would last like maybe a month or two. And I was like, it's going to be fine. We're going to come back to school. <laughs> you, oh man, when they said that, I had no worries. I'm like, what? This, what was I'm like, I'm like, two weeks, we'll still be practicing. We'll be right back in action. Yeah. Two, two weeks later, came. Nope. <laughs> uh, all right, give another week or two. <laughs> week or two, nope. 
Right. That's really how I think everyone was. Cause like yeah. well, one more week of quarantine, one more week of quarantine. We were like, it'll just be one more week. It's fine. But so yeah, yeah. So I was just like practicing and, and working out thinking that I'd have a full season this, this year coming up. Yeah. Um, and then I forget when we found out that it was the, all the fall. it was like really recently. Yeah, it was recent. yeah, we found out maybe like a week or two ago that all fall sports were canceled. Um, and, and when I heard that, I was like, it's okay. We're a winter sport <laughs> and yeah. uh, it'll be fine. But that meant that like no one could even like have any competition in the fall semester. So that, that was a hard week for me. I cried again. <laughs> I'm a really emotional person. <laughs> um yeah and if, if if I was going like if I if this happened to me going into my senior year like I, I don't know like I it already happened it cut my senior year off yeah. but I completely understand like yeah like, I mean both of us had to deal with something pretty bad so yeah, yeah. um so yeah I just I want to make the most of it and I think knowing now that I only have 16 games to like do really well and do what I want to accomplish I think that's kind of like that's a motivation it's a motivational thing and I'm like I only have 16 games and like each game really means a lot so I think that it'll it'll help me but also it's just like oh, I wanted like that full experience of my senior year um I'm sorry. oh it's okay it's okay we're all going through the same thing really um so yeah I just I just have to make the most of it and that's all I can do that's great that you got like great head on your shoulders <laughs> I don't know finding the positives out of it you know what I mean anybody could just you know and, and really like beat themselves up for it mm -hmm. so, and of course you're you're the uh incoming captain this year again right you were captain last year right yeah I was yeah. incoming captain and of course you got that look at the mindset and stuff you have you know how do you how do you plan on it? because now like not everyone thinks like you you know what I mean so yes that's true for anyone else but I'm just some people might be down on themselves and whatnot, or some may be like frustrated or upset because of all of this. So how do you plan on coming into this season as a captain, you know, keeping everyone settled and stuff and, you know, just, just focusing on the good things. How, how do you plan on doing that? Yeah. I think the challenge is going to be knowing that we have a full fall semester of only practicing. So like as an athlete, yeah, you want to get through the preseason because like you're working towards that first game and you're like, you cannot wait for the first game. So just, yeah. <laughs> but what I thought about that because you know what, August, September, and October were like the longest months. The longest months ever. The workouts, uh, yeah, I, I feel for y'all so much mm -hmm. because I got September and December. Oh, yeah. my. So that's like an extra two months of just like lifting, practicing, playing pickup. Um, which are all good things. <laughs> yeah, we're going to get big. Um, so they're all good things that we have to do, but just thinking about like the, the duration of that, it's, it's definitely tough on your body. Like whenever you're in the season playing games, you get off days, you get more off days. I'm sure that our coach will like take that into account, like four months of like a preseason. Um, so it's not, I don't think that it'll be as intense as a normal preseason, but I think that's going to be the struggle is reminding the girls like, okay, yeah, there's like a long road ahead of us, but all you can do is live in the present moment. And our coach, coach McConnell, he is great at like inspiring us and being like, you only have grace for this moment right now. And if you like look ahead to the future, it, you'll just end up getting down on yourself and being like, Oh, I cannot, I can't last this long. So it's really just one day at a time. Um, so as a captain with my other captains, Justina and Mora, um, we're just going to have to keep our attitudes like on point all the time, like always bring the energy and just be excited to be there. You know, like we are blessed that we can even play basketball. Um, so I think when you like look at it that way, it's really easy to be like, wow, I have the opportunity to get better today. So that's the goal. <laughs> Being able to change the perspective. That's like, that's the best way to, to help somebody out because you know, a lot of us get stuck on just focusing on one thing in this way. Yeah. When you outside of that and like you know look at it from this way you know that that was one of the things I, I was able to do like as I as I was a captain and just being a great teammate and trying to help mm -hmm. people out and like you said coach McConnell, all your coaches like uh coach McConnell he's very great with y'all mm -hmm. he knows what he's doing and also I'm sure because of it being a long preseason process I know he's gonna have 
you know, some other things for y'all to just, you know, let loose and, you know, yeah. <laughs> a little social event or whatever, or, you know, or, well, I don't even know social event if y'all allow, but. <laughs> right. Will we even be allowed to be in a room together? But <laughs> no. uh, you're definitely right. Like, I know that when we all were sent home, Coach McConnell had us meeting on Zoom every week because mm -hmm. like when you're isolated like that, it's so easy to get depressed and just like go into your, your little shell. Um, yeah. So I think that when we're back on campus, now that classes are online again, um, all of us will be living around campus. So he'll probably have us meet up and yeah. hopefully if it's allowed, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you guys will, will hang out more like all outside of basketball, you know, yeah. you guys will each other more like like I know I know for us like I always see my teammates and stuff all the time and whatnot and we hung out and stuff as well but like now there's like no classes no nothing right so like, like I, I'm but from a guy standpoint like if it was me I can see us like having a little 2k tournament or <laughs> you know us just hanging out and stuff every day oh, oh, come on. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Oh, good. I paused the recording, but we're back on. Oh, great, great, great. So I got a phone call. I thought I uh, turned Do Not Disturb on. Oh, you're good. Uh, I didn't do that. That was smart. Um, yeah, but we don't play 2K, but we, <laughs> we can maybe figure someone out. Maybe y'all can learn to play 2K. I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, the men's team will be there. They can teach us how to play 2K. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's funny. You know, like now nowadays, uh, a lot of the athletes and stuff, like that was one of my main things when I got the IEP was like, you know, now there's other athletes, like I'm around other athletes and stuff. Like we should all be like connected in some way. We should all be cool with each other, you know, because oh, like, I agree. We're, we're all doing the same thing. We're all busting our butts, working mm -hmm. out, we all share something in common and we represent this, this, uh, this school and everything. So it's like, you know, why can't we all be cool? Why can't we all hang out and, and have fun yeah. time? Uh, you know what I mean? And no, that, that's that's, true. that's been like one. Whenever I was here, it's just like learning other athletes, learning learning about them, learning their sport. Like I didn't know nothing yeah. about us or field hockey or um, yeah. <laughs> field hockey for sure. I didn't know anything about. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know anything about that. I, I want to get out there and get this. <laughs> no, so, you're you're so right. I think that since there won't be many people on campus at all, I think it'll just be athletes and then the freshmen who are allowed to come back. So it's really, we won't have any choice. Like if we want to socialize, we're going to need to get to know the other athletes. So I think that'll be a good thing though, because we all are like-minded and working towards the same goal. So, yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like weird. It's exciting, weird. And it, there's like so many emotions just going into yeah. this year. Um, I think what else, what else I have for you, but. <laughs> oh. yeah, I'm excited, but I think that things could still change a lot. So I think that's the stressful part. Like there's just some anxiety behind it. Like what if the, the season in January doesn't even happen? So uh, yeah, it's hard to stay positive, but I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and then like all in all, in fairness, they, if, if they're not going to do it that way, like it, if they want to put it on pause, you know, they, they need to be able to, there got to be a resume button. You know what I mean? For like, for like seniors like yourself and whatnot, um, yeah. you know, for like next season and stuff. But like, then it gets conflicted because of like scholarships and then yeah. and whatnot. Right. Like I, it, need, it needs to be handled more. And I don't, but like, I don't know. I'm not with the big wigs. I'm not talking. <laughs> You're not a big wig, Chucky? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not. Talk to him a little bit. That's too stressful for me. I'd have great Oh, uh, I couldn't imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so how many, so, Let's, so you guys lost Lexi and Natalie. Lexi, Two Natalie, yeah. And then Madison, who had been hurt for a long time. But, yeah, yeah she, Matt, she's leaving, too. Poor system, though, as well. Um, so those, those are very key important, very key players for y'all. Who, who do you see? First off, tell me what they brought to the table and how, and how that's going to affect your team going into next year. And then tell me how – how you guys are going to fill the, those uh, roles and stuff. Of course, you're going to shoot, you're going to shoot just like <laughs> three threes, of course. But, you know, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so Natalie, also my fellow Splash sister, she is a great three-point shooter as well. Um, so we're going to definitely miss that. Like having both of us on the floor at the same time was 
a threat uh, at the three point line. So, um, but I know that there's other girls on the team that can knock down threes too. So I know anyone could step up to that position. Um, and so I was like playing the point guard position, which is, it's not my first position, but we made it work. Like a lot of us could bring the ball up at the same time. So um, I was still able to get a lot of threes. And then <clears throat> Lexi, she can attack, she can shoot. She's just like, she is all around a great athlete. So we're definitely going to miss that. Like she's strong, fast, very athletic. So um, both of them brought a lot to the table. And um, coming in next year, we'll have Justina back, Mora back. Um, yes, back. I'm glad. I'm glad she got yeah. another year. I was yeah, so yeah. So we're both red shirt seniors this year. Same, same with Justina, actually. Um, so yeah, that'll be cool. And then Kiara, she is our other big man, and um, she definitely has improved a lot. So I'm definitely excited to be playing with her. Um, Elena, she can shoot the three too. She can drive. Um, Raja, oh my gosh, Michaela. <laughs> we're gonna have, we're, we still have so much talent on the team, and like even the freshmen, like Maria and Josie, that are coming up and Mackenzie she can shoot the three too um so I feel like yeah we lost two great players but I know that that can be filled and I know that like the girls have been working hard this summer so I'm excited the great the great saying like they used to say back home where I'm from like you know they don't rebuild they reload I think that's been something <laughs> you guys have been about you know the past years because think about the year before you guys had what four or five seniors between Brittany uh yeah. Brittany, Carolyn, Laura, Lauren, Kendall. Am I missing one more? No, I think there's only four. But yeah, between between that senior led team you guys had, you know, and they made a final four run, for you guys to lose them, lose them, and yep. then be, uh, come back this season and have another strong season. You guys lost three games, right? Yeah. Basically, on the quest to another final four run, elite eight run, almost to the final four, you know. That that right there defines that. You know, you guys don't yeah. rebuild. So, you know, you guys had senior led team. A lot of teams that lose their seniors, you know, it, it's going to be a tough next year for them. But that was not the case at all for y'all. And you guys were a different team. You guys were able to adjust. It was, yeah, it was, much different. It was a different kind of um, nucleus and stuff. But it, it worked out better. Yeah. And it's a thing for the men's team as well. So like that. That's how I, that's how I was able to understand you guys and you, mm -hmm. you're good you guys were having yeah it was it was interesting because when we lost the four seniors um people definitely doubted that we would be good at all which I think that motivated us I was like whatever the haters can hate and we're just gonna be motivated by it <laughs> ones that are, are outside they don't know they don't right? come, they they don't know the dynamics of the team they, they don't even basketball at that like <laughs> Yeah, sometimes they don't. So yeah. it was just interesting to hear like how many people thought that we wouldn't be good. Um, but we ended up being a great team and we were number one in the region before it was canceled. Um, but actually during during this last season, Tierra, she tore ACL. Um, yeah. And I, I just remembered we're getting her back this year. So yeah. that'll yeah. be a great addition too. She's strong. She's a great rebounder. He, yeah, T brought a lot of energy to the table. Yeah, uh, she did. Yeah, that's something you guys are definitely going to need. Raja, oh, I remember her. She sparked a couple 20-point games or something like that. I mean, strong. And, yeah. Like, I'm excited. I'm excited for you guys. I, I, <laughs> you know, if you're around and stuff, you know I'm at the game. I'll probably be a crazy fan or something now. Yeah, we're we're going to need it. There's not going to be fans in the stands, so you, you're just going to have to sneak in or something. Oh, sure, I'm sneaking. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm in there. Oh, you're, I'm, you're a big wig. You're going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> so let let's change let's change it let's change the topic a little bit and talk about the racial issues and stuff going on. I know I know you're comfortable about this and yeah, everything. Absolutely. You know, with with everything going on, you know, tell me how you're feeling. Like, what if you were able to like get your word out to everybody, and, or how Courtney feels about what's going on? Like, tell 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 the people that. Yeah. So actually, when this all started. Um, and, and mind, mind you, from a mental aspect, it, it got it, it. This is like really crazy because COVID. Everybody's locked up in their houses, yeah. and all you're seeing on your phone is like you know a lot of a lot of hate and racial stuff and whatnot. So you know it, it's a lot. Again, you know, from an individual standpoint, you yeah. Know, 
Sorry, well, Nina. Yeah, no, no, you're good. So I, th luckily, sometimes I think this is a bad thing, but right now I think it's a good thing. I don't have any social media. Um, I think that if I did, I would just, bad things would be happening mentally. Like I can't, sometimes yeah. I just can't handle seeing those things. Um, so I feel very happy that I don't have social media right now. But um, whenever this like first all started happening, like the team, we like reached out to each other and we were just like, I feel like we should get our word out there about like su this supporting this movement and like telling people how we feel and like knowing that as a team, we support each other. Like it doesn't matter what color you are. Like we are a team and we love each other. Um, yeah. So in that video that we made, um, I just didn't even know how to like express myself. Like it is a really hard thing to talk about. And I just decided, like I play the guitar and sing as you know. And so I was like, I love I love the video as well. By the way, I love oh did you see it? Yeah, of course. So. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was it was like it was a really good video. Elena put it together for us, and um, I didn't even know like what to say. And like the first thing that popped into my mind was the song P "Let There Be Peace on Earth," and like that is how I'm feeling. Like if I could put it into words, it would just be like I just want there to be peace on earth like i want people to just stop seeing color and just love each other like if there isn't love then like what else is there like i feel like love is just the highest thing that we can like achieve and yeah. if we don't have love for each other then like there's something internally wrong in, in us like if i look at you with anything but love like there's gonna be problems so i just think that like the root of all of this is the fact that like uh, the police officer that killed George Floyd, he just like had a lack of love in him. Um, and there was something internally like messed up. And, and I think that just comes from maybe lack of love in his life. So I think that it's all like, it's just really all about love, in my opinion. That's how I feel. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, it, that's what that's all I've been trying to be about is just love. And I, I just read a good scripture the other day about, about love, how it, uh, remember but it, it love I went wait can I pause this real quick and read it yeah go ahead Does that work I think okay. yeah I think if you like swipe up oh, yeah okay okay uh, I'll actually read it because I thought it was really good love bears all things believe uh believes all things hopes all things endures all things love never fails it's Corinthians 13 mm -hmm. 7 8 I, I don't I don't really know all that but I just seen it and it, oh, that's it, that's a really good verse that's a great one you know, I, but I read that the other day, you know, it, it kind of like sparked a, sparked a light bulb in my head about stuff. But, you know, more than anything, it's just all about love. But like, so like from my aspect of everything, I try to show love no matter what, because I understand there's a lot of misunderstandings and stuff. And, you know, we don't, we don't, a lot of people don't understand each other. And exactly. the main is this racial stuff going on, like, it it stems from so it first off it stems from everything back then. Oh yeah. But like when you live your life for a long amount of time, you all of a sudden have that entitlement, that pride to how you lived your life, you know. Because I, I lived my life for twenty what, what is going on? <laughs> Did it pause? So I keep getting You're bad. You're good. Damn calls be getting me. <laughs> but uh, you know, I lived my life for 23 years and, you know, I'm happy with where I got. So it's like everything I've learned throughout my life was why I got here. So it's like if somebody tells me, oh, you've been brushing your teeth the wrong way your whole life. <laughs> no, I like, you know what I mean? I don't want to hear that. Yeah. I, that's like the main standpoint kind of with this racial thing. Like a lot of things stems from so much back then. And now and, and now it becomes like your pride. You know what I mean? It becomes yeah, stuck. It's hard now. for people to change the way they think. Really. Yeah. It's yeah. Hard, yeah. hard to like unlearn everything that you learned and, and rebuild that because yeah. you don't. So, I mean, like, so if I have a conversation like with, with somebody that who's white and they don't understand, you know, I don't, I'm not initially mad at them, but I understand, I understand why people are mad though you know what I mean like why people of color yeah are mad, you know what no, I mean of course. I, it's justified anger yeah exactly because for all all their life you know it builds up anxiety and stuff 
And you know, the first thing you want to do it, and we, and you know, the people of color have the right to be mad. You know what I mean? You see people get blatantly killed on camera, and there's like no patient for it. You know that you have a certain right to be mad. You know, so like, I, I don't think that it's totally wrong for that because you can't tell somebody how they should feel about something because yeah. like, if I see that like. It, I, that, that's me. Like, that's how we feel. Like, that's me. That could happen. Like that could I, have happened to you. Yeah. yeah I, outside and somebody might put their knee on my neck for eight minutes. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I get why people may be frustrated and stuff at, at, at that. Mm -hmm. And then like, I try to take the extra initiative though, to understand why they're not understanding. You know what I mean? So like, like I try to just, be more peaceful and calm when I talk to people. I don't talk to too many people, but you know, if, if somebody has a misunderstanding and stuff, you they can sit down and talk to me. I don't, you know me. Right. I'm no, yeah, that's. I think that's the best way to approach it. Um, yeah. There's a lot of people that are coming at it with like anger in their heart, um, mm -hmm. and like that's a lack of love right there. So we just have to like approach each other with like peaceful understanding, and that's the only way we're ever going to accomplish anything. They take, take that initiative and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And like and educate yourself. Like I, I am oblivious to things sometimes and I have a lot of friends of color and like, I, I typically don't even think about it. Like, and then yeah. all this came up and I'm like, Oh, like maybe I should ask some of my friends, like what it's like for them. And so I asked like one of my guy friends, like, do you, when you like leave your house, do you like think about the color of your skin? And he was like, all the, like all the time like I can't leave the house without thinking how I'm going to be portrayed and like watching what I do like making sure that people like are portraying me the right way and I just like I started crying because like I never think about the color of my skin so sorry I'm getting emotional I told you I was emotional earlier um yeah yeah and, and that's the thing and, and there's there's so much involved in this like between media, the news and stuff like, and how they portray things because um, I'm kind of like lost track, but like, like you were saying, um, dang, now I lost track. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> You're good. Yeah, you. I'm just gonna wipe my tears while you think. That's why, why the right word. Um, let me think about how I wanna put, how I wanna put it. <laughs> Like the meat, like I want to talk about the media and how they how they portray us and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, dang, I really just had a brain for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Basically, the media doesn't portray things the way they should. Yeah, exactly. And like, oh, basically, like so. Yeah, so like the media, they hide a lot of stuff. They don't they don't talk about the right things. This is where I want to get at. You know what I mean? So like now, you know, like not just saying you, but like there's people who live their whole life, you know, just one way and these things weren't brought to them. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't brought to them that, that uh, police are killing black people. Police are beating up, police are beating up people, period. You know what yeah, I mean? That's you know? so true. And not all police are bad, but nope. the, what's the word for it? The, the culture, the culture of police, you know what I mean? The culture of police needs to be changed and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So like you have, we have to take action towards it because like with, and, and also the culture of media needs to be changed also because there's people, like I said, they, they live their whole life. They don't, they don't understand that police are beating them up. Police are doing bad things and stuff like that. And the only thing that the media is saying is, oh, well, he resisted. Like they're making it seem like, yeah, he yeah. resisted. You know what I mean? <laughs> So like now you got this side, these people like who grew up and they never seen anything like that. So they're thinking like, ah, well, it, they're used to it. It's not, it's not nothing important to them. Yep. And then there's the other side of like the community of people who have been, you know, beaten up by police or killed by police or terrorized by police. You know, we're seeing the truth and stuff. And now we're colliding them two worlds. And, you know, these people, they don't understand. They don't see that. They've never seen it throughout their life. And they follow the media and whatnot. And now they have their beliefs. But, like, this side over here, we're trying to tell you. You know what I mean? We're trying to tell yeah. you. them two worlds. Right they're seeing completely different things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's ugly. But, like I was saying in the beginning of this conversation, you know, it, there's going to be a lot of ugly and stuff. But we got to think about 
future, our kids, our grandkids, everything that's going on, we got to think about down the road and stuff, you know. Like, I know it's going to be ugly, but it's for the better for down the road. Because I, I want to see this country change. I want to see, you know, like, I, I, I'm, proud, I'm proud of this country. But, like, at the same time, we still have a lot more things that we need to do. Yes, a lot. Yeah, a lot. You know what I mean? And I, I feel like we can get there. But, like, we're, it's going to take that elephant in the room. It's going to take, you know, a little bit, you know, um, our moments and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm not afraid. A lot of uncomfortableness. Yeah. <laughs> not afraid of uncomfortable moments like I'll speak <laughs> up yeah I, it, it's whatever like I let's get this out the way I'm not gonna sit here and just be like running like man yeah no, I, I'm just get out the way and if you feel some kind of way like okay you know I don't hate <laughs> ever <laughs> I agree <laughs> I don't mind the awkward <laughs> that's funny but yeah that's just that's how I've been feeling about it lately you know I wish I wish like I could just like I don't know. I wish we could just like flip the switch and everybody just act normal. Like every, every, <laughs> everything like, right. Like, yeah, that's, that'll be a miracle. Yeah. But of course, you know, we gotta, gotta handle this stuff the way it is. Yeah. Everyone so when, has their freedom to think, but sometimes people just don't think in the best yeah. ways. So, so uh, now with classes being online though, Let's flip back to school and basketball. With classes being online, so now what are they talking? You said they didn't say anything about athletes yet, nothing about in, in or anything? No. So President Driscoll's email said that we would each be uh, directly emailed by our department. So, like, the health like department would end up contacting me about how, like, all of my biology, chemistry classes will be and – um yeah, we hopefully we'll get those this week. Um, I think that maybe um, some of them would do like online Zoom sessions, like where the teacher would actually teach us while we're on Zoom, which would be nice. Like you could ask questions and stuff, but at the same time, I don't want to like have to go on at a specific time of the day. I like to just like do how I want to do it. Um, but if I, they were in person, I'd have to go anyway. So I'll suck it up. Um, and then in terms of basketball, yeah, we'll find out tonight. Well, maybe we'll find out tonight how it's going to be with practicing and when we can practice. So we're just, just going to try and calm my heart down. <laughs> yeah. No, just keep over there, Courtney. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get you out of there. I, I oh, no. <laughs> I, it's always on my mind. <laughs> yeah. So, uh. Could we talk, are, are you comfortable with talking about, you know, the new hairstyle and stuff? Like, I love it. Oh, yeah. I love talking about this. I love and support it all 100%. And I see it's growing, it's growing back. Yeah, back. it's much longer than it was. No, I love talking about this. Actually, there's a picture of me right there with really long hair. But, <laughs> um, so I actually, I did this during quarantine. I shaved, like, I buzzed it all off. Like, it was, it was really short. Um. Oh. So it's been like four months and going back. The it's process. Very thick. It's so thick, but it's really cool to see your hair go from like nothing to like. Yeah. It's um, yeah. So I did it initially because I felt like a lot of girls used their hair as like a security blanket. So like they would draw their beauty from their hair. Like if their hair didn't look good, they felt ugly. If their hair looked good, they felt pretty. And I'm, I was just thinking, like, I don't necessarily, like, lack confidence. So it wasn't necessarily for me to gain confidence and, like, realize, like, oh, I actually am beautiful without hair. It was more so, like, I wanted to, like, show other people, like, you can do whatever you want with your hair. Like, you don't even have to have hair. And you're still a beautiful person. Like, it doesn't matter if you have hair or not. And so after doing it, like, my mom thought I was crazy. My family thought I was crazy. A lot of my friends were like, are you sure you want to do this? Like, I don't support this decision. <laughs> Most of my teammates did, but Raja, Raja's my girl. She FaceTimed me while I was doing it. Okay, Raja, yeah. Yeah, Raja, Raja's the one that, like, I did an undercut, too. You know, I did that. And she was, cut it for me. Yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> I there. It was in your apartment. Um, so, yeah, she cut the strand for me. But she was there when I did it, and she was all for it. And, um... I realized like after I did it, a lot of my friends, they were like, wow, that was really bold of you, like inspirational. I could never do that. 
And I told them the reason why I did it. And they were like, I, I just could never do that. And I was like, you could like, I like a year ago, I would have been like, absolutely not. I'll, I won't do that until I graduate. Like, I don't want anyone to judge me. But then I was like, why am I living my life scared of judgment from other people? So I was just like, I'm, I'm just shaving my head. And it has helped me like be more confident. Like I don't need hair to be confident. Um, mm -hmm. It's been really fun. And like, it's kind of funny, like the, the amount of like weird looks I got like when I first did it. I think a lot of people probably thought I was sick. I'm just like, nope, I just shaved my head. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, but it was, it was interesting to see people's responses and like tell them why I was doing it. Um, so yeah, I'm super happy I did it, but after I'm in a wedding and af in September and afterwards, I'm going to start like experimenting. More with okay. 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 Yeah, I'm excited. I'm really excited. I love it. I support it 110%. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh. But I love it. I support it 110%. You took you took that initiative, like like you said, very bold thing. And like you know, actually, I was thinking two things. One, I was wondering if you were like keeping like a process, like not every day, but you know, like like every week or month or something, you know, take a pic just to see the process. Yeah, I have. It's so okay. cool. <laughs> and then two, I know you're not on social media, but mm -hmm. like something that's something that's that like I think could be on social media because like you said like for you to step up and take that initiative you know that can give confidence you know that like what I'm liking what I'm seeing on social media about when people are giving confidence and stuff or yeah being bold about being an inspiration because now all of a sudden they see that from a retweet or something you know it makes someone else want to do that and now yeah. it you know it domino effects as long as it can affect one person but like that is like very bold and your purpose behind it yeah is like is like beautiful it is perfect you know it's it may it, it may about to shave ball real quick. <laughs> shave it all off <laughs> yeah. no, that's so funny i agree though but i remember i had to do the athletes uh the iup athletics page like instagram takeover so i had an instagram for like maybe like three weeks or four weeks just because I wanted, I'm, I made it so that I could watch the other athletes do their takeover and like take little notes and stuff. Um, yeah. So I had an Instagram during that first moment that I shaved my head. And so I think that my first post was like a story and I like showed my shaved head. And that's when I got like a lot of girls like, oh my goodness, I can't believe you did that. So like, I think it did help people that I wouldn't have normally talked to or like they wouldn't have normally seen that I did that like people that I haven't talked to in a long time. So I'm glad that at that moment I had an Instagram, but yeah. I ended up deleting it. But um, I think that that would be something super positive to like post about and like help other girls be like, oh, I could do something like that too. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're, that's an inspiration. Yeah, you're an inspiration for that. Just oh. know that inspiration. Like I'm sure that that spark, and even, it don't even gotta be like, you know, other girls shave their head or whatnot, you know yeah. what I mean? But the, the reason behind it, like how you said, you know, girls with their hair and stuff, now it helps them, like, okay, like, you know what, like, I can't really speak for girls, but, like, <laughs> I, could be, I could be wrong, and you could tell me I'm wrong and all that. But, you know, for, for other girls, now they can, now when they look in the mirror and stuff, you know, that sparks in their head, and it's like, you know, I, I shouldn't be worried too much about this. I, I need yeah. to call, you know what I mean? So true. No, you're definitely right. My... One of my best friends, she has like long, blonde, gorgeous hair, like so long. She goes to IUP um, and she texted me after I did it and she was like, okay, I'll never do that. But like, you really put things into perspective for me. Like, exactly. I understand what's important now. <laughs> I was like, yeah. okay, as long as you know. <laughs> yeah, that, that's beautiful, Courtney. If you, yeah. if you social media back, I, I would, I'm going to keep encouraging you. <laughs> People because they need that. I probably and you know me. I'll promote it. I'll do what. Oh, I absolutely! Do. You're my. You're one of my greatest supporters, Chucky. I think that I think that it'll blow up and, and whatnot. And like even doesn't like I said, I know it'll inspire somebody at least yeah. one. But it, I mean, if it affects one person, it was worth it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's that's like that's the main thing. Though. I, I'm I'm glad for you for that. I'm happy. So, so you said, oh, we're talking about this season. You know, we're coming up with different styles. We're, 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be in my uniform. Like, I'm going to look funky. But I want to do a fade for sure. Yeah. Okay. 
I'm gonna do a fade and then hopefully yeah. this part will be longer. It will be. Um, and I think I'm gonna dye it. I don't know what color yet. Say hey, wait, wait, we changing colors too? We're changing colors and it's, I've only ever dyed my hair black and like my hair is almost black. It was, it was a little bit different, but I'm gonna do something like very drastic. <laughs> Courtney, I'll tell you this, all right? If you dye your hair, I will support, I'll dye my hair that same color. No. You got I, a pinky promise over Zoom right now. I will die. I, I, <laughs> this works or whatever. But like to support you, I swear I will. I will dye my hair that same color. All Maybe right. I'm taking your word for it. This is being recorded, so I will show you this if you don't do it. it hey, the word is out there. It maybe for a week or a month or something like that. But I will do it in support for you because hey, like even if it was like, just a day, I would love it. So I'm so happy for you doing that and like. <laughs> I don't mind doing that myself to, you know what I mean, to support you as well. Like, I don't. Okay, I'm excited now. Now I'm definitely doing it. <laughs> and it's out there. I think, Ryan, I think this is going to be posted on Twitter and stuff as well. Uh, Everyone's, if you, so if you don't do it, everyone will come at you. No, I'm doing it for sure. Okay. Um, even if um, it's blonde? Even, yep, even if it's blonde. Even if. <laughs> All right. Whatever it is. We got to call Raja up because you know she know how to do Raja it. Raja will get some dye for us different styles with my hair too like I cut it I grow it I grow a fro yeah like, you do you do change it up I'm gonna do something like that <laughs> but whatever's going on around that time just know it's gonna be blonde. whatever color you got I'm I'm okay. right there I can't wait this is gonna be great <laughs> oh yeah uh, this like just made my whole week this this actually sparked my whole week that's coming up too oh know? I am honored this is so, great and, and it took a while I'm sorry it took <laughs> yeah Everyone was watching this. It took Chuggy like three weeks to do this. It's okay. I got it under control. The wait is worth it, though. Trust me, Courtney kicked my butt enough. <laughs> I did. My butt get me on here, but thank you so much, Courtney, for for You're doing so this. You're welcome. Definitely worth it. And like, I I feel so good just to talk about stuff and and just to talk to you in general. It's always good talking to you. Like I said, like I said, in it. When I came to IEP, first off, the first summer I came to IEP, like, Courtney was there whenever we had basketball camp and stuff, and, wow. you know, we talked and everything, and I, it's been the same, it's been the same ever since. It's been great love and everything. And, you know, I really value the relationship that we have, Courtney, and I, I really do. No, yeah. we don't, hey, but you know, soon I, I'll hit you up. I know, Courtney, I love you, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it, it's always been True. the same. Even, it doesn't matter how long we don't talk, it's always, it's always the same. I'm yeah. really excited you're gonna be here at IUP. I can't wait to come back and you're gonna you're gonna work out with me. Yeah, we're gonna get some work. We're gonna get some work here for sure. All right, sweet. All right, everybody. Thank thank you for uh participating in this. I'm not sure how you'll be able to view it. Uh we'll figure those details out later. But you know, this is a great talk today with Courtney, Courtney Alexander. She's got a great year coming up and then, you know, outside of basketball, I think that's what COVID taught a lot of us is that there's a bigger purpose in life than basketball you know that's what taught me that's what taught me that's why I haven't been like so like down and stuff about the hoop season and stuff I found a find just finding another purpose in life finding a bigger better purpose in being able to um you know find some kind of meaning and stuff and serve a purpose so you know uh, you know basketball ended for me in my season but like that's okay I'm okay with that you know I, I, I'll, I'll still I'm, I know God put me on this earth for to do great things and just play basketball. Basketball is fun and it's great and I love it. I committed so much time and so much mental energy towards it. But I know that I'm worth more than that on this earth. So, and, and I know- And Chucky, woo! You definitely are too, Courtney. I love that, yeah. But all right, Courtney, thank you. Thank you so much for You're doing this. You're so welcome. I hope you have a great day. <laughs>